is um, what I wanted to do today is just go over some of the resources that I have available for you and talk about what um, I envision a plan would be for making money in the real estate business and perhaps answer any questions and to let you understand how the system works and how we're going to be moving forward and, and all of that. Does that sound good? Do you guys have any questions for me to start with? Quick one. Uh, I thought you were working actively for Keller Williams over there in San Jose, San Carlos area. So if you're not, and I have a lead from somebody over in Santa Clara, you would no longer. No, I'm. I my license is actually at Keller Williams Silicon City, which is in Santa Clara. Okay. I was the number. My team was the number three producing team in May for that market center. Um, I still coach people in San Carlos, although I just don't go to San Carlos to do it. So I have people that are in my coaching program that are up the peninsula as well and uh, all over the San Jose metropolitan area. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is yes. I'm still, I'm still, um, it's unusual in a sense since I'm a, um, a productivity coach because I'm still active in the business. Most productivity coaches don't sell real estate, but, um, my belief is, is that if I'm telling you to go do this and it's going to work, that I ought to be willing to go do that and show you that it works, right? And so sometimes down in um, the San Jose area, I actually go out into the field with people and we go talk to the big scary people that are out there about selling a house or buying a house, right? But yes, I'm, I'm still active. And the tie that Silicon City, which is Santa Clara, and we're pretty much all over Santa Clara County. Any other? Don't, don't blurt them all out at once. Okay. okay. So what um, I want to make sure you, I have a bunch of resources. So what I thought I would do is just explain what some of the resources are. I have a YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is called 24SANJOSE. 24 San Jose. No spaces, no hyphens, no pip. 24 San Jose. Don't ask me why. It was a long time ago. And I've got, if I, if I click on that, you can, can you guess which one is mine from the <laughs> results that come up? Right. And so you'll see here that I have 206 videos. <clears throat> wow. It's, and 759 people that are subscribed to my channel. And so what you're going to find, and there's some more things I'm going to upload that I've made recently, is, is that when I do most classes, I record them, and when I record them, I put them on my YouTube channel. All right? I also have a website where I may be putting special secret stuff on it that you'll have access to, but my YouTube channel has most of my stuff. I do that for a couple of reasons, because not everybody's here, right? Not, you know, not everybody's here. And if you have an issue, like you have to write an offer, you want to do an open house, people call me up and say, I've got an open house this weekend, what do I do, right? You know, I've got five minutes on the phone, explain to me everything I need to know about how to do an open house. Um, I have it, and my answer is I have a two hour long video <laughs> where I go through more than you ever wanted to know about how to do an open house, right? And so some of this stuff, if you're looking for something to do, um, I would you could look through some of those videos, right? The other thing is, did all of you get an email from me yesterday? If not, it means that you're not on the list that I got from Tony, um, which is something that's easily correctable. I give you my email address. If you just send me an email, my email is mdevlin at kw.com mdevlin at kw.com and if you send an email to that email address saying put me on your coaching list I'm in Santa Rosa or wherever you are my uh, assistant who is located elsewhere will do that and then you'll get my email see every week you should be getting an email from me and what the email is going to show is all the sessions that I'm going to be doing that week everywhere and you can log into them because I broadcast them all on the internet um, I'm going to be in Santa Rosa in person at least twice a month. All right. So like every other week I'm here 
whether you I'm wanted or not. Um, and so that we can do some things individually. And then you can say I broadcast it to the people that are down there. When I'm down there, I broadcast to the people that are up here. All right, so that's the that's the 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 first couple of things. <laughs> um, uh, in the NUP. So I'm going to just, what I'd like to do is share, there's some other videos of me doing this, but I always feel like doing it when I'm doing it. Um, let me just, uh, that was, let me just explain to you what I think you ought to be doing. And uh, would you like to know what I think you ought to be doing? <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. Be good. So, and, and then I'm going to explain how going forward, Hopefully this will work. Okay. What? Do you need some water? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. So the way I see the business is uh, here. Let me just do this so the visual of the people start complaining. Right, there we go. Yeah, I know. I know. It's just, <laughs> you're not here to say hey. I can't see anything. So um, I, I coach a lot of people at different levels. And so phase one, the way I view your career is that phase one is what we call launch. And that's generally for your first three transactions. But the goal of the launch phase is for you to learn the business and make some money. Do you understand? And it's really setting a foundation for phase two. And phase two is what I sometimes call momentum. It's also called coach to cap. It's a, an optional thing. If you're interested, I'd say about half of the people that I'm coaching are in that phase, which means they're, they're, they've already done three transactions, but the goal is to get to 100% commission as fast as possible. It may seem ironic that the office's goal is for you to get to a place where you're no longer paying the office any money. Doesn't that seem like a, uh, like a contradictory philosophy, but our goal is to get you to cap as soon as possible. And once you cap, you're at 100% commission, and every transaction you do at 100%, that's really good. Do you understand? There was a guy that I was working with at another market center, and two or three years in a row, he capped. The same month, he was resetting back to his original commission plan. Do you understand? Even though he made it, to, he got the cap. Right? Do they give caps here too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got the cap and he got the, you know, hold the belt up and dance in front of the team meeting and all that. Um, he had no transactions at 100% each year, right? He, got, he had a lot of caps, but he never made any money. Do you understand the goal is to not just the cap, but the cap early enough in the year that you can have a bunch of transactions at 100% commission. Doesn't that seem like, a, like an effective goal? All right, so... What I'm going to talk about, because most of you that are here today are really, um, and come on, how about this? How about this? <laughs> and Cece loves it when she sees me struggling. <laughs> I, she just, she, she's just like, this is so no, much fun. I know, I know this is so, so much fun. All right, um, so we're going to talk about launch. And what I what I believe, and we're going to actually do something useful today. Does that seem like a it's just some, something as a shot? Um, the first thing that I think that you need to do, S P H E R E, is to your sphere of influence. Now you're going to find if you go to my YouTube channel, sometimes this is referred to as S O I. You're going to find. Um, that I have a bunch of videos on sphere of influence, right? There's a bunch of videos on this. And I've sent out, um, I have like a checklist of things that I send out to the agents or in the coaching. But the first thing you're going to want to do, and by the way, when I'm done, I'll share this with you, right? This is just sort of a, I, it's hard. I, I, I grew up in an era where we had these things called chalkboards, right? You understand? I mean, you have, I'm not kidding. And then, then there were markers. I get, I get that look, right? You know, I get that look. And then there were marker boards. This is what we have today, right? Isn't this it? So what that means is that you need to have a database, right? And my suggestion is until you 
reach a level like you're close to capping that you use the Keller Williams database, which is called eEdge. You're going to find that I have lots of videos on that too. And we're going to actually do something in eEdge today that you could use with your database. Going forward, it might be a good idea if you have a laptop, a uh, computer or something like that to bring it to the sessions. Right? I'm just, I, I record them for later, but I did a class the other day on contract writing. And there are people that came to the class without a computer which, how do you write a contract without a computer in today's world? And the answer is, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. You could use a tablet. You could use a laptop. But you need to have a computer. And I have this, one of my assumptions about people that are successful in real estate, and this comes from, a, I think it was Woody Allen or somebody like that who originally said 80% of success is just showing up. Right. And so do you understand that there are over 20 people in the coaching program at this office? And this is how many people have showed up. Right. Do you understand the, the good news and bad news about real estate are sort of the same news. And what that news is, is that most of the people who get into real estate fail. Do you realize that close to 90 percent of all the people, certainly 80 percent of all the people who begin a real estate career fail and drop out within five years? The second thing is, is that of the people that are in the business, 20% of them are earning 80% of the income, and 80% are fighting over 20% of the income. Right? Now, the, that may sound like pessimistic talk, but it's actually a great opportunity because if you show up and you work, you're setting yourself aside from most of the people that are in the real estate business. Most people in real estate do not look like they're in a business. They don't act like they're in a business. They don't look like they're in a business. They're not ready to do business, right? So I do a contract clinic and people show up that don't have computers. That means they can't write a contract. Here's the thing, if you don't have a tablet or a laptop, you can't write a contract. And then in the group, I have people write a sample contract and send it to me. And out of about 20 people that were participants, I got three that actually filled out a contract and sent it to me, right? If I hadn't been doing this for a long time, I'd be discouraged. But do you understand most people don't do anything? I don't know if you've ever noticed that, right? They just don't do anything, yeah. right? And so, you know, they don't show up. They're not ready for business, right? You'll see I usually am wearing a name tag or I'm wearing something that says Keller William. I've done real estate transactions because I was wearing branded shirts when I, showed, when I went to shopping. I mean, I've closed real estate transactions because I wasn't a secret agent. So one of the things that you have to do in order to be successful is you have to make a commitment that you're going to do this. You know, one of the things I've been doing this for, I spent, I hate to say this, I spent 25 years at Century 21. I know that seems hard to believe given my youthful appearance. However, it's true. It's true. I spent 25 years at Century 21, five years as their director of training for Northern California uh, I was being patient, thank you. Um, five years as the director of training for Northern California, Northern Nevada, and 20 years as the vice president of the large Century 21 group in Silicon Valley. And I've been doing this with Keller Williams since late 2011. And what I've noticed all those years is I've, I've had a chance to reflect on why people fail and why some people succeed. Would you like to hear what my, my and there's two things that have come to my mind as to why people are successful in real estate. And number one is they have a desire to do it. And a desire strong enough to produce a commitment. And a commitment strong enough to keep at it long enough to produce results. You understand the desire equaling a commitment. Right? And what that means in specific language is if you work hard and you focus hard enough for a long enough period of time, you, one of the metaphors I've heard is something to get an airplane to go off the ground, right? There's a certain ratio of thrust you need to drag in order for the, in order for the plane to lift off. Right, and that requires, once the plane is lifted off, you don't need as much thrust in order to keep it going. 
But is everybody, everybody here where I'm going with this? And so at the very beginning, you need a lot of thrust because you have a lot of drag, right? There's a lot holding you back, a lot slowing you down, which means if you don't like them, my original metaphor was you have a railroad car and it's sitting on the track and you want to push the railroad car down the track. It takes a lot of push to get a railroad car to move when it's been sitting at rest, right? Do you understand? But once it starts to move, it doesn't take as much push to keep it moving. And the faster you get it to move, the easier it is to keep it moving. Did you understand? And at certain points, it reaches momentum, and you can sit on the car and ride it. I know real estate agents that have stopped prospecting. They've reached the point in their career where they just sit around and wait for people to call them and say, remember me, as long as I was like years ago, we like to buy something bigger. When can you come by and put our home on the market? And they're saying, well, I'm booked until next Thursday. Right? I could work you in at 7 o'clock, great, we'll be there. Do you understand? That's when the business has gotten easier. So a lot of the reason that most real estate agents fail, first reason is they're not willing to push hard enough for long enough when they get started. You understand? They're not willing to push hard enough and long enough at the beginning. My real estate metaphor is a real estate metaphor. In other words, it's like building a house. Yeah, yeah. See, he just likes it. It's building, yeah, I want to hear it. It's like building a house. The most important part, the most expensive part is the foundation. But it's the part you don't see later. Isn't that right? Right? You don't see the foundation. But so what we're talking about in the launch is building a foundation. Does, does everybody get the second reason why real estate agents fail is, there, is they lack the second quality they need to succeed, I'll say it in the positive, is a willingness to learn, a desire to do it, and a willingness to learn. And after that, I've not noticed much in common among those that were successful. You know saying? It's not age, it's not sex, it's not education, right? Uh, there's not, those are the two things that I've, I've seen. So related to this is a database, and what a database means is that you need to go through your cell phone, you need to go through your email client, you need to find everybody that's there, everybody that you know, everybody that's in your system, and you should put them into a database. And what we're going to talk about doing is once you have them in a database, you need to contact your database. Right. And, I, and I have videos on how to do this. There are campaigns, and I'm going to actually show you a marketing piece that you can send to people that are in your database that they probably won't mind. But you have to contact. How about contact database? Now, in the old days, and by the way, I thought about doing this because people still have issues with computers. I'd give people 5 by 8 or 4 by 6 cards, 100 of them, and tell them to write out on the card everybody that they know and whatever information that they have, right? You still have those? Did you look at my desk? I have a big index, a big one. I have a big index box with a big, large index cards. There's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> right? And you know one reason for doing that when you're new is that some people, they get into the eEdge database, the Keller Williams technology, and they say, I don't understand it, I don't know what to do with it, and I can't work it, so they don't do anything with their database. So, what? yes? Lou, did you? Well, I was going to say, I'm visual, and sometimes I feel like once things go into the database, they're in this black hole of this tiny list with all the, you know, and I like to look at, I have stuff up on the walls in my office where, you know, right. and I can see it, and I'm keeping track of the ones that I'm contacting right now, and the different levels of a relationship, and it feels like it's a black hole sometimes. Yeah. See, it's fine. I don't mind people with five by eight, three by, four by six, what kinds of I have the large ones. The large ones. I have the extra I mean, large ones. Because I think over time. <laughs> That's fine. At some point, though, you also need to communicate with them. Right. right. And we're going to talk about that. So you need your sphere of influence. You need to have a database. And whether or not it's a card file box, whether or not it's an Excel spreadsheet, whether or not you want to use Google Contacts. I, I, I work with agents that have purchased programs like Contactually. They, there's a hundreds of these programs out there. I really don't care. The things that it needs to be able to do is, number one, you need to be able to record comments. So when you have a conversation with somebody and they say, well, no, I'm not going to be ready for a couple of months. We're going to be going 
on the vacation. We're going to go fishing in Alaska the last week of August and when we get back so that you could write in going to fishing in Alaska last week of August. I'll be back on this date. And then when you talk to them, you could say, oh, how is Alaska? Did you catch any fish? Why haven't you invited me over? Is, it, is, that, is that a logical question, right? You know. Um, so when's our salmon dinner? Yeah, when? when? So, so some of you, are, it may take a little getting used to me. I have a tendency to be sarcastic. I don't know if you've, I've, I've actually listed that as one of my languages on kw.com. Did you know that? It's, it's sarcastic. Anyhow, um, so you need to contact the database. The other thing you need to do is to, is to add to the database. And one of the things that successful real estate agents are good at doing is they're good at collecting people's contact information. Right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, that could involve social media. I've hired somebody entirely through social media. I did not know her phone number or her email address. Everything was done on Facebook messaging. Right? Are there people today that will say, if you say, can I get your email address, they're going to say, I'm on Facebook. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Right. And so, but you need to keep, so that means whenever you meet somebody, you realize the beauty about being in real estate is that everyone you know and everyone you meet is a potential client. Isn't that pretty much right? Mm -hmm. Because either now or in the future, they're going to buy or sell real estate or they're no, going to know somebody that can. And my approach, which is not, entirely Keller Williams approved, right? But Tony's heard me say the words and he isn't, he isn't telling me to go away. My approach is, is that you ought to contract, you ought to focus on getting referral business and referral partners, which we're going to talk about. If you had 10 people that would refer two people a year to you, would that be a good start? And let's say another 30 that would refer one person a year to you. We're looking at 40 people in your database, and you could have 50 clients, right? That's, that's where my focus is going to be, finding those 40 people. You don't need 400. You don't need 4,000, right? You just need the right referral partners. Um, any questions about that? Does that seem like something you're going to be able to do, right, that you're willing to do? Not everybody wants to do this. I'll just say it. I've had people say to me, you know, I don't want to bother my, I'm not, <laughs> what did she say? I'm not going to hound my friends now that I have a real estate license, right? Does that ring a bell to anybody that if you were to, that you'd be hound? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So why would, so how could we, Contact them in such a way where it wouldn't look like hounding. Of course. How would you do that? Uh, I, I would just say, hey, I'm a real estate licensed agent now, and any way you can help me out, you know, just just not not full of pressure, but hey, you know, I'm here. Think of me as a friend. Reach out. You know, that's all. That's not hounding. That's, that's just fine. being who you are with with your sphere of influence. Being who you are. So, and what kinds of jobs or businesses does your sphere of influence have? Can you think of somebody in your sphere of influence? You don't have to say their name, but what kind sure. of... Sure, he's a geologist. A geologist, right? Talk about a rocky road. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, do uh, real estate agents ever use geologists? Um, they might. Yeah, they might. Yes, for... Uh, he's just... I don't really know exactly what he does. Yeah, but, it involves but, rocks or something. <laughs> Actually, he does some types of inspections. Yeah, for, some types of inspections. Soil. Yeah. Soil, soil inspections. Reports, but right? also like home type uh, foundation. Foundation inspections. Mm -hmm. So as a real estate agent, are you ever going to run across people that would uh, need a foundation inspection? Maybe so. Maybe so. Might some of your clients be interested in foundation issues? That, that could arise that your friend might be able to speak to. Uh, yeah. If you were going to put together a newsletter, would it be possible for him to, or to him, mm -hmm. to say something regarding foundations and include his contact information on it so that people could reach him directly? Mm -hmm. 
Now, you understand where I'm coming from. It's in, we have a saying in, in Keller Williams about coming from contribution. So if I come from the point of view, how can I help you build your business? Mm -hmm. Right? How can I help you build your business? Is this likely to be looked at as a different kind of a conversation than, hey, you know, I got my real estate license and, you know, it's really tough. You know, really tough. You know, I got bills. I got, uh, you know, I, I need, I, I really need money. Maybe I brought some of my children's orthodontist bills with me to show you, right? You know, you got to know someone, right? You know, help me out here. I'm dying, right? You understand that may not be the best approach. So it's, yeah, you know, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to reiterate what you said, turn it around and uh, make yourself valuable to them. And you know, to my friend the geologist, how can I help you? Right. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. How can how can I help you grow your business? Mm -hmm. And is it possible that in uh, that way they could help you grow yours? Mm -hmm. Could could he be good for one referral a year? Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe two. Maybe. He could be in the ten that we want to from. Does there do you have another example of somebody else? Who make it really hard? Because the only only friend we have hairstylist. is a group. What? A hairstylist. A hairstylist. They talk to people all day. They talk to people all day. And so do they, are every, every independent contractor, self-employed business person, do you understand all businesses have two businesses? Mm -hmm. and one part of the business is the prospecting and marketing part of the business. And the other part of the business is the customer service part of the business. Does your hairstylist friend have challenges for getting clients to? Right. So, right. Now, I, that doesn't fit as neatly as maybe a geologist does. But does everybody understand, should you be having coffee with your friends on a regular basis? Should you go to lunch with your friends on a regular basis? Right. And and rather than saying, look, at I'm in real estate and I really need to make some money and it's really been tough. If you ask them about what's going on with them, what's what, how are they doing? How is it working for them? Do you understand? But we're trying to, we're building relationships, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that right? We're building relationships. Yes. I just really like the fact that you're mentioning one or two a year from these people. And right. not like we're trying to build a business out of these people and expecting yeah. more than those few referrals because that really puts it in perspective. Like, yeah, my hairstylist, I've given her my cards. I've talked to her about this, but you know, if she refers one or two people a year, just that, I may not even think anything's happening from it for six to eight months, whatever, but that one year, yes, yeah, that just kind of puts things in perspective. Right. Yeah. You don't need a hundred, but when you work backwards, our numbers are very good. You know, down there, they're even better because the median price is a million dollars for a single family home. But, but you understand even at your median price, if you had 20 transactions, could you live on that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And so we don't need a whole lot from any one person. We just need an, enough from a large group. And so many people, by the way, I, you're not going to hear me talking about door knocking, calling for sale by owners, expires, or cold calling. Right. You're not going to hear me talk about that. Now, if you want to learn how to do it, there's plenty of resources and scripts that are available, but I don't teach it. And the reason is, is that when the National Association, first, this is my philosophy. If you don't find a way to generate business that you're comfortable with, that preferably you enjoy doing, you either are going to hate being in real estate or you won't be very effective at it. Right? You understand? If, if being in real estate requires you to do stuff you hate to do on a regular daily business. You, my experience is most people just aren't going to do it. You might as well go do something where you're happy, right? Because that, that's my, no. so, um, and when they survey buyers and sellers, they being the National Association of Realtors, and they ask them the question, how did you find your real estate agent? 4% of the time, they said the agent contacted me. Over 40% of the time, they said they were referred by somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So why not focus on the referral, not on the call? Now, that doesn't mean I have got people that are working for sale by owners and that want to learn to work expireds. 
that to me is phase two, right? Do you understand that once you've gone through launch and you built a foundation, if you say, well, I'm, I'd like to do that because I want more listings, that's something else. The other thing that I, R-E-F-E-R-A-L, referral, how do I misspell that? Two R's. Two R's. One L. And one L. I told you I was going to need your help. Because <laughs> uh, I usually spell it two R's, two L's. My spell check, right. my spell check notes down. And for those of you who have heard me do this, I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm going to do it again. But one of the things that I believe you ought to do, and there's videos of me going through a list of these, and I have copies of the scripts, and is, is what I generally, in the general thing, we'll talk about referral partners and specifically banks. I have often called this Operation Donut Drop. And the way Operation Donut Drop works is you get up, you get somewhat dressed up, you put your name badge on, and you go buy a box of donuts. And then you go to a bank and you ask to talk to the person who's in charge of home loans. When they introduce you to the person, you say, hi, my name's Mike. You actually say your name, but you, you get the idea. My name's Mike. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. I brought you some donuts. Now, a lot of people wonder why the donuts? Why are we bringing them donuts? The look on their face when you present them with a box of donuts is, is precious. I'm just saying that because they're always being asked to bring stuff for us, right? Always. And they'll look at it and they'll say, you brought me donuts. Wow. That's a, and you say, oh, and then, by the way, I've heard all the, I've heard all the objections. Donuts are not healthy. Um, can I bake cookies instead? The answer is yes. Um, cookies, I don't want to bring cookies. They're not healthy. I don't care if you bring fruit. Right, you under, you know, I just saying that there's some value in bringing something. If you went to a friend's house, would you? It says I lost my audio. Let me just see. Let's just see. All right, so. I probably not. So you 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 um, you have a box of donuts. You have cookies. You have something. You go talk to a bank. Ask to talk to the person in charge of home loans. You say hi. My name is Mike. I'm Keller Williams Realty. I brought you some donuts. Just reaching out to some of the lenders to find out how we might be able to work together. Let me know what kind of loans are you seeing a lot of. What kind of business are you doing? What trends are you seeing? What should I know about what you're doing that would help me as a real estate agent? This, by the way, is a slow pitch to a person in loan sales. And they're going to start talking, right? Sometimes they won't stop for a while, but they'll start talking. And when they're done, you say, wonderful, that's great. I'm sure I'm going to have some clients that are going to be interested in loans just like that. Um, you have some business cards. Can I have a couple of your business cards just to, you know, so I could give to people? Right? Now, how is this sounding so far from the loan agent's point of view? You're doing it all for them. Right. You write them donuts. You're doing their marketing. For right. You, and, and by the way, they're they're told to go meet real estate agents and one just walked in. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you say, by the way, I assume from time to time you run across people that you're helping with a home loan that don't have a realtor yet. I'd love to work with you and work with those clients. Hmm? By the way, do you guys do mortgage days? A mortgage day is a day that the bank sets up where they have a table, a booth. They put up balloons. They sometimes have water or food. They put up flyers for a couple of days in advance telling people they're going to talk about home loans. And you get to sit with the loan agent at the booth and talk to people. You see, the thing about banks is they already have traffic, people walking to the bank, right? And so this gives you an opportunity to sit there. Sometimes they're kind of dull. Sometimes they're kind of dead, right? But... Um, is it better than sitting in the office in the cube all day, sitting at home watching the Nature Channel? You know, um, you, you, you understand. Then the, they, you get an opportunity to talk to people that walk into the bank. Is this, can, how many of you can see yourself doing that, right? And then you need to follow up with them. And I have a video that I did recently of the follow-up system. But you send them a handwritten note. I throw in a Starbucks card. 
handwritten note that says, thanks for talking to me today. I look forward to working with you in the future. Next coffee's on me. Uh, producing a newsletter, what's going on in the real estate business, sending them a newsletter, dropping by every once in a while, uh, renewing the relationship, right? If you're a good talker, you might be able to get them to do a home buying seminar with you. Hmm? you know, I kept in touch with one of mine by, by bringing questions about my buyers and referring buyers, even if the buyer didn't follow through and it didn't go anywhere, but it lets him know I'm out there doing something and I'm also going to refer him, and that seemed to work. He's actually said, you know, he's, he pretty much said, you're going to take off because you're busier than most of the real troops. I know because you're getting yourself out there. And so then I, that was my opportunity to say, yes, and I'm also looking for referrals. And so it's starting to build that way. Just Is it possible that a bank loan officer that likes you could send four people a year to you? I, I'm, I really? wonder that only because from what I'm, I've heard is that it's, more that the, the loan originators depend on realtors, but they do get, I mean, because of the way things happen these days. There are two kinds of lenders, and I'm speaking in overly general okay. ways. One are mortgage companies, prospects a mortgage company. That's why they're in the office. That's why they come to team meetings. They don't have walk-in traffic. Okay. They have to go out and lead to generate. Okay. Number two are banks. Banks spend a lot of money to rent or expensive retail storefront high traffic space. They're not as concerned about lead generation because they have walk-in traffic. So the mortgage companies are more likely to partner with you in other kinds of lead generation activities. Okay. Right? That's because really good to know. Right, because they don't have walk-in yeah. traffic. I don't know where Prospect Mortgage's location is, but I'll bet they're not spending the kind of money the Bank of America spends on one of their locations, right? They probably have something that looks like this. How much walk-in traffic do you get? None, right? So do you understand those are different? Now I do. Thank right. you. That's a real good piece of information. Right. And then what about credit unions? Credit okay. unions fall into the bank. Um, and I've done, I used to do home buying seminars with Mary West Credit Union. They would invite their 40,000 members. They would send out to their 40,000 members an invitation. They had the room, and I brought a team of agents to help answer the questions, and I spoke, and they spoke. By the way, if you guys, I've done hundreds of home buying seminars. If you wanted to arrange something, if you could get some, if you really could get somebody that wanted to do something big, I. I'm easily bought. I could come up and, and do something. <laughs> I am. I mean, it's, I'm, 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 I'm relatively I'm, cheap. I'm, I'm waiting to see you on Fiverr. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we'll coach for five dollars. <laughs> so, um, the other thing, which and these two are related, is open houses. Now. One of the things that I believe that you ought to be doing is four or five open houses a month. Unless, did I say week last time and then everybody jumped on me? <laughs> I think you did. And we were just like, seriously? And I, def I defended four or five a week. And you did. Yeah, right? you did. It was uh, kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because for many of you, doing an open house on a Tuesday afternoon is a better use of the time that you might be spending otherwise. Right. See, I coach a lot of people, and they're picking up kids and dropping off kids at certain times. So I know not everybody is in a lockdown facility from 9 to 5. Right? Isn't that true? Right? And if you're doing an open house in the afternoon or noontime or something like that, is it possible you might meet a neighbor, somebody might walk in, you might meet a client? If you're staying at home watching the Nature Channel or, um, you know, um, the chances of some or being chances that somebody's going to knock on your door is slim, right? So, but you ought to do four or five open houses a month. You could do more if you want to make more money. My rule of thumb was I did four open houses, I got a client. And the open houses, my and, and I confirmed this with Tony, not all the Keller Williams Market Centers that I work with allow this. But the ones that I'm working with now do, including this one, right? I had to ask him because some said no. And what I mean by that is, is that you, you should start by looking for open houses of any Keller Williams office anywhere 
that has a listing in your area. Particularly, um, you were mentioning, she asked, Cece asked me if I knew somebody from an office that I used to work with, but I don't know that guy who has a listing in this area. Are there agents from Keller Williams that have listings in Sonoma County, but they don't live in Sonoma County? Right. And so these, this is the lowest hanging fruit. People that are not from the area that are with Keller Williams that have listings in this area. Now, if you want to get the open house, what you ought to be doing is every day, every day you ought to be looking through the MLS for some of these plums. Right. You ought to be looking for somebody that has a listing who's from Keller Williams that is in the area that the, the, the listing is in the area, but they're not from the area and then you ought to contact them. I have an email template if you're too chicken to call, and the email template says, I, I see you have a listing at, you know, my name is, this is what I do when I do an open house. All right, number one, you're going to have professionally made flyers. Number two, there'll be an ad on Craigslist. Number three, an event will be created on Facebook. Number four, the Facebook event is going to be boosted. Number five, I'm going to hand out flyers to the neighborhood. Number six, I'm going to be there early. Number seven, there's going to be at least 10 signs. And number eight, I'm going to have a sign-in sheet. Number nine, um, before I leave, I'm going to I'm going to have refreshments. Number nine, 10, before I leave, I'm going to text you with a rundown of who showed up and what they thought and how many of them had agents and what their level of interest is. You will not have to hunt me down to find out that information. Number 11, I'm going to make sure all the lights are turned off, everything is clean and left the way it was when I found it, right? And you take that email template and you email it to people, are you likely to get open houses? Yes. Right. Now, if you want to plus this, what plussing it would mean is you can do open houses for any real estate company. Right? Now, this is what I confirmed with Tony because the other offices allow that too. Some don't, but some do. So let's say, do you like, would you like to avoid rejection? And if the answer is yes, what you do is you search the MLS and you look for vacant listings in Sonoma County or wherever you're interested in doing open houses. Vacant listings. Then, this is a I don't want any rejection system, and then you go through looking for agents with vacant listings that are not from the area. How do you do that? You look at their phone numbers, right? Look at their phone numbers. See a 408-510-650, you know they're not from the area. Nine months, not from the area, right? So you, you know you have an agent. Do you understand why this is low-hanging fruit? They're not from the area, and it's a vacant listing, which means there's no coordination that has to happen with the seller. Right. You call them up and you say, hi, my name is Mike, I'm with Keller Williams Realty up in Santa Rosa. I see you have a listing in Santa Rosa that's vacant. Oh, are you doing anything for open houses? I'd love to do an open house for you. And by the way, you're going to find that nine out of ten times they're going to say, wonderful. That's great. So now the, the question agents sometimes ask me is, well, don't, isn't it going to look weird because I have Keller Williams open house signs and the, it says Remax on the, you know, on the for sale sign. What do I do when people ask me about that? And the answer is you say George from Remax represents the seller in any transaction involving this property. Is that a true statement? Uh -huh. yeah, he's the listing agent. I'm here to represent anybody who's interested in buying this house or any other homes in the area. Just keep going, right? Do you understand if you do that, is it possible that you could be doing an open house every weekend? Sure, yes. Who do you know, assuming you've been following this in order, who do you know that would be interested in the fact that you're doing open houses, would like to join you at the open house, and might even bring snacks to the open house? Lenders. The banks. Go talk to your bank. The bank. <laughs> So do you understand, some of the banks that you talk to are going to say, well, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I have some buddies that are in real estate. We go golfing every week together, and I send my leads to them, and then find another bank. Just go next. How many banks are there in Sonoma County? Amen. A lot. How about that? A lot. And what you're going to do is if you keep talking, do you understand, if you did this twice a day, you went to two banks a day, maybe you have to split the donuts in half, right? You go to two <laughs> Two banks a day, and you did that five times a week. You think in a month you'd find a couple of banks that are going your way. And do you have buyer leads to give them right now? I do. 
you do. But if you don't, would they like to do an open house? And I've had new agents say to me, well, I don't want them, you know, to bug them, burden them. You don't understand. They want to do. You understand the bank has a better, the bank loan agent has a better chance of getting a client than you do at the open house. Just saying. Yeah. The bank loan agent has a better shot at getting a client than you do at the open house. I noticed that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So are they going to be happy that you're inviting them to do open houses? Right. Yeah. Uh, kind of it was a little confusing because I did go to an open house a couple of months ago. Uh -huh. And the realtor said, look, this is priced right. We're going to only accept offers for the next four or five days. And there was a letter there. And so they asked me whether I was pre-qualified, and I just happened to be that I was. But I, I told her, I said, well, if they're going to only take offers for the next five days, how can you get somebody pre-qualified legitimately within five days to even have your new open house client purchase his home? Well, first of all, I would say that the agent doing the open house was um, making an error. And and the reason for, the, does everybody understand the reason for doing an open house is not to sell the house? It, it gives you an opportunity. Now, now you would like to sell the house, but I'll tell you my experience, and I've been doing this for a long time, 90% of the time when you meet somebody in an open house and they want to buy that house, they don't buy that house. Hmm. Right? They you don't. They want to buy that house, but they don't buy that house. If they say, I want to work with you because I'm interested in buying this house, 90% of the time you're not going to get paid. Right? Because, and what you need to do, and there's videos of me, are there videos of me doing the open house yes. thing? The, the, what you need to do is break the idea that they pick the agent based on the house. But you understand, because that's really what they're doing. They're saying, well, you're here at the open house and I want to buy the house, so I'll, get, I'll let you write the offer. What you have to do is engage them into a con in a conversation. Has anyone ever shared with you the best system to get a good deal when buying a house in the market like we're in today? Has anyone ever done that, sat down with you and, and gone through strategies for negotiating the best deal possible when you're buying a house in a market like we're in now? Has anyone ever done that? Yes. No. Well, you know, in this kind of market, to tell you the truth, you need a strategy to buy anything. And if you're looking to get a good deal, you need a really good strategy. Are you looking to get a good deal? Would you, would you say you're, you're looking to get the best deal you can? Right. Well, are you serious? Would you say you're serious about buying a house? Would you say you're, are you serious about buying a house? And if they say yes, great. If you're serious about buying a house and you're looking to get the best deal possible, this is what I suggest. Why don't you come into the office, have a short meeting. I'll go through the strategies for getting the best deal in a market like we're in today. Won't take very long and uh, we can go from there. How does that sound? See, the purpose for doing the open house is not to sell the house. And when you say to somebody, we're only taking offers for the next four days, what you're doing is you're qualifying that house. Why well, mention that? I, I would just say, I'm great, wonderful. Because all that does is put people off. Right? And that's not our that's not our goal. Most of the time when somebody the, uh, there's a video of me saying this, and I've had people watch it, and then they wrote me emails wondering if I lost my mind. But I, I, there's a video of me saying that the worst thing that can happen to a new agent's career is you're doing an open house, somebody comes in and buys the house and uses you as their agent. This is the worst thing that can happen if you're a new agent. And the reason is, is that your mind will be twisted for <laughs> decades and you'll be waiting for somebody to come in and buy a house. And in the, all the years that I've been in real estate, I one time I had somebody walk in and bought that house. Right, you understand? And so if you get that one at, in your first six months, it may be that was it. And from now on, all you're doing is looking for somebody that wants to buy the house. Do you want to buy the house? I'm here to help you buy the house. Right, and, and all of the 99% of the business is just flowing past you. Right? So by the way, does that can you can you see yourself doing what I described with open houses? Sure. 
Right. Yes. Just speaking on your behalf, you know, I called you and you gave me that. You fed me that line a week ago or whatever it was, ten days ago. And I and I called back the folks that I met at the open house and said just that. Like, does, has anyone talked to you about strategy and how you can get it? You know. And they said no, they haven't. And I said, do you want to meet? And they said yes. And we met for about forty-five minutes or an hour. You sent me that memo of agreement, whatever it was called. Yeah, the, the, the service, yeah, service, agreement. service agreement. And they signed that. So, and I took them out and looked at stuff with them. They told their lender to call me. He's called me. I'm taking them out tomorrow, and we're in. So it seems to work. <laughs> Thank you for the help. You're welcome. Thank you for that. I gave her 20 bucks at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. and you're like, what is it? it paid me in weeks. <laughs> yes. Well, we'd be going over at least, or can you direct me to the strategies of when you have the What I'm going to. Office? Yes. Okay. What I'm doing, by the way. So the, the, um, where I'm at right now in my sequence of training, which are, was on the email, if you got the email, is I'm going to be doing the buyer consultation. Okay. Right? And I think I have a class scheduled this week. Okay, so the strategy equal buyer consultation. Well, you have to come in. So what the strategy really is is this. So if you want to get a good deal, there, there's three parts to it, really. One part is you need to be exposed to the best buys that are on the market. Now, without going through the whole, and there's videos, by the way, of me doing this, right? Plus, I've typed up some of the some of it, but there's videos of me doing this. Um, but the, the bottom line is, in terms of getting the best deal possible and finding the best buy on the market, um, you're you're approached with two options. One option is, is to have several real estate agents who don't really know as well or understand as much. Um, that are working to find your house or having one agent who is committed to you that knows and understands thoroughly what you're looking for and is really committed to helping you do it. And the question is, which is going to produce the better results, having the four or five or an unlimited number of people? See, if I'm, and this is what I'd say to them, if, if I run across a really good deal, something that looks like it's going to go in a couple of days, who am I going to call? Am I going to call people that have told me that they're working with four or five other agents, or am I going to call a direct client? Mm -hmm. Am I going to call somebody that, I, I, isn't this the way life works? If, I, if, if you don't make a commitment to me, I'm not going to make a commitment to you, right? And anybody who says they're going to work just as hard with or without a commitment is either an idiot or a liar. Then they'll just drive around, look at the sign, and call the listing agent. Right. <laughs> or, so, so you could do that. Sure, that's a good, that's a great option. If you're getting divorced, would you use the same attorney your spouse was using? <laughs> Why not? Just think of the money you'll save. That, that's interesting. That's an interesting way to put that. All right. Actually. Why not? Just think of the money you would save. Why have two attorneys? We just have one, right? Let let him pick, right? See, so, you know, now they, they, you know, everyone's like, well, no, I wouldn't do that. Well, why not? You, you can't carry water on both shoulders. So is the, if the listing agent knows that the property is overpriced, will they tell you? If the listing agent knows that there's another property that just came on the market that's a better deal, will they tell you? When the listing agent shows you comparables for which you to base your pricing decisions on, are they going to cherry pick the ones that make their price look good, or will they show you the ones that would seem to show a lower price? So you, you give the buyer an education. You give the buyer an education. It's called a buyer consultation. And you say, buyers don't care. Everybody's listening to the same radio station, WIFM, and that's what's in it for me, right? <laughs> and so what I see agents doing is they say, well, I'm not going to work with you unless you agree to work with me. I'm not going to spin my wheels. I'm not going to waste my time. If you won't commit to me, I'm not going to commit to you. Well, that's all nice, but that's what's in it for you. What's in it for them? Right now, if you can demonstrate that they're more likely to find the right house, because this is what I would tell people, if I'm working with you directly, I'm going to preview all the homes before I show them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've told me you're going to work with any agent that happens to you happen to meet, am I going to spend my time going out and previewing properties to narrow it down for you when I don't have a commitment from you? Right? Do you understand? That's a big commitment of my time. Number two, before I show you a property, I'm going to do a comparative market analysis on the property. Now, that's also a time-consuming thing for me to do, which I can't do unless you're willing to make a commitment to me. Mm -hmm. So having me motivated and committed to finding you the right home, previewing the properties before I show them to you, doing CMAs on all of them so we have good pricing information when we go look at it, 
would that be likely to help you get a better deal in the market like we're in today? Their time's valuable, my time's valuable. Right. Exactly. But that requires a commitment. We don't, so we don't have to agree forever. How about two weeks? Give me two weeks. Oh, Let's wow. do it for two That's weeks. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it for two weeks. See if you like it or not. I didn't, when, and, and I used to say to people, I, I work with professional buyers, investors. They don't drive around open houses. They're not setting up a bunch of searches on real estate agent websites. They're not going through Craigslist, right? What they would do is they'd call me and say, Mike, this is, write this down. This is what I'm looking for. Find it. Call me. That's how professionals buy homes, right? Amateurs are driving around open houses, talking to 15 or 20 different real estate agents, setting up searches on eight or nine different websites, right? But we all have the same database, don't we? Right? It's about how much I understand of what you're looking for and helping you narrow that search down so that you can find it quicker. And, and, and you need to make an offer right away if it comes up. Uh, this is why I used to say to people, you know, your dream home has come on the market and has been bought by someone else several times since you began this process. Do you realize that? Your dream home, it was there. You missed it. How would you like to make sure that never happens again? How would you like to make sure the next time your home is on the market, you get to see it and to make an offer before anyone else does? Does that seem like a, right? Mm -hmm. So I have videos on all this, but, but that's what you need to have a close other than you want to buy this house, right? Because then there's no connection to you once they've come in. So, I'm going to be doing classes on the home buying consultation, and I was talking to John about putting a camera and a microphone here. Oh, oh no. yeah. yes, yes. Because part of what is involved in this is actually practicing the words. In other words, I want you to practice writing offers. So until, and, until you've written so many of them that you're, it's easy, it becomes natural, it's boring. Writing offers are boring for me. Even when they're offers I'm writing on a house for my clients, I'm still bored because I've done it so many times. Right now, if you're not, if you're nervous, flustered, anxious, making mistakes while they're watching you, you understand this is not you, you need to practice writing offers. You need to practice doing a home buyer consultation. And so what we're going to do when I'm doing this is or, or after I go through it and I have a, a plan, I want everyone to practice with each other, right? So that the first time you're there and they look at you and you're looking at them and they're looking at you and you're looking at them and they're looking at you and you're looking at them, you know, you understand if you've never done this before. I, I have agents that call me up down there and, and say, I got a buyer, can you come in and help me talk to them? even though, and so I got tired of that, so I'm going to make them go through practices asking each other questions until you know the questions so well that you don't need to even have them written down. But you should have them written down anyhow. Does that sound like, um, and related to this is um, goals, plan, and accountability. So what um, I will send you, if you haven't gotten them already, is I would like you to have a goal. Now, the goal, I believe when you're in launch, it's difficult for you to say, well, my goal is to make $200,000 the rest of this year. Because there's a difference between what's called a lead and a lag indicator. A lag indicator is a result. It's very hard to goal set results. A lead indicator is an activity. Now, that's an easier, do we have control over that? So, for example, could a goal be, I'm going to talk to 10 banks next week? Could that be a goal? I'm going to get my database together. Could you, that's something you could do. I'm going to call everybody in my, you should be having a couple of coffee meetings a day. The people. Yes, you can have tea if you don't like. Just, just. 
I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not been asked that. I don't drink coffee. I have water. <laughs> and then by accountability, what that means is, is every week, what we're going to do is I have Wednesday morning meetings down, which are broadcast, and I send out an accountability. It's good to say to someone else, this was my goal, this is how I did. Do you want those every week? Yes. Okay. Do we fill I those out online? Yes. And then? I put them on my Facebook page with your picture. You say, ah! and there. It's a, this yes. one blew it. <laughs> no, it's just so that when we do talk, I want to see how, what people are, 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 how they're doing. And by the way, sometimes it's more of it's more for you than me to do it. Yeah. Right. Do you understand? Even if I never read them, yeah. um, the fact that you have to report keeping a, um, a a food journal is more for me than showing it to anyone. Right. You you, under, you, you get the the, yeah. the metaphor. Right. I have a question. Oh, yes. It's, it's just has to do with leads and viable leads. Yeah. Um, you know, like what you're going to keep in your database and what is what you would want to talk. So what is a, there's the old line, there's no, there are no bad leads, right? But then that's maybe an overstatement. Um, I don't believe you want to spam people, right? I think it's good for you to have a newsletter that you can share with people, but if people, I would ask them in advance if they are interested in receiving it. From time to time, I put together a newsletter. You know, every month I have a newsletter, what's going on in the Noel County real estate market. Uh, I think it's interesting. Other people have told me they think it's interesting. Would you like to get a copy, yes or no? And if they say no, then don't send it to them. Real estate agents are famous for asking people like John and myself, is there any way I can send people stuff whether they want it or not? And I, I want it in the email so they don't have to open anything, so they can't avoid seeing it. Um, you know, how do I do that? Right, how can I just throw it right down their throat, right, you know, tell me how do I do that? And I'm like, whoa, you know, um, that may not be the way to win friends and, uh, you know, influence people, right? So, and if they say, no, I'm not interested, that's fine, don't send them stuff. But do they have birthdays? Are there holidays every month? Can you send them a holiday greeting? I, I guess I'm, I'm, I've been doing open houses. Yes. And um, like, for example, I did an open house yesterday and I would say that three or three of those leads were neighbors. Um, you know, um, uh, just people that some were interested, some were like, oh, I just want to see, I'm, I've been here, I'm never going to sell my house. And they, I collect their phone number. Um, some put down their phone number, some won't. Some put down their email, some won't. You know, um, so I've got these piecemeal kinds of but things going my, on. My, and I have videos of me going okay. in great nauseating detail. My, my, the quick thing about the, the goal is to get appointments. The reason for doing an open house not only is not to sell the house. The other thing, it's, the goal is not. The goal of an open house is not to collect names, phone numbers, and email addresses. This is not the goal. Now, again, this may not be exactly Keller Williams approved material, but the goal is to set appointments with people. Mm -hmm. right? And so um, I, for a long part of my career, didn't even use a sign-in sheet. Mm -hmm. And when I did a sign-in sheet, I would say to people, I'd make a joke, hi, I, you know, who'd have thought? I'd make a joke, I'd say, hi, welcome, come on in. We'll hope you don't mind signing in. I have to prove to the owner I actually work today. I'd be, nah, nah. But then why should they tell you their phone number? Because what will you, you're going to call them. Do they want you to call them? No. No. Why should they give you their email address? Do they want you to email them? No. 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 Right? So. Email so they don't have to give you their phone number. Right. And then they, 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 <laughs> they write it differently. So the idea is, is I have a video of this. I have about eight questions that I'd ask people when they would come in to the open house. And then at the end, I, after I, I was building rapport, if they said, no, they don't have an agent and they, they don't seem to be committed to the agent or whatever, I would say, has anybody ever shared with you a system for getting a good deal when buying a home in a market like we're in today? Has anyone ever done that? Ever, ever talked strategies about how to get a good deal when buying a home? Very few people are going to say yes. And you say, well, I suggest, if, are you serious about buying a house? Would you see you guys are serious? about buying a house? 
Yeah, well, if you're serious about buying a house, you ought to have a strategy. See, the mistake I think most real estate agents make is they talk about what but not how. Right? What kind of home are you looking for? What price range? What area? What bedrooms? What bathrooms? What age? What, 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 what? How are you going about finding the home for your family? Mm -hmm. How? Right? Do you understand? That's really the question. We, that's what the strategy is aimed at, the how. Everybody has the same what's. Mm -hmm. right? We all have the same database. But you, if you're serious, and you'll notice if you watch my videos, I say the same things over and over again. Right? Are you serious about buying a house? If you're serious about buying a house, has anyone ever shared with you a strategy for getting a good deal? Anyhow. So that's the plan. Does that sound like a workable plan for you guys? Could you see yourself doing that? Right. And it's better than, better than some of the other things I can suggest. All right, so we've gone on a little bit long as I lose everybody, not everybody. Wow, I see people all over the place. Um, so this week we're going to talk about doing the buyer consultation. And I've gotten tired of people calling me and asking me to help them do it. So we're going to practice doing the home buying consultation. All right. Doesn't that sound like fun? Doesn't it? If you were, uh, do they let doctors practice on live patients? <laughs> no, no, you don't get to practice on live people, do you? All right. And so we're going to be practicing on each other. You need to do this enough. By the way, if you do five open houses a week, you'll be a different person at the open house. But you have to be purposeful, right? I know agents that have done open houses for 25 years and are no good at it. Because all they do is they want to sell the house, and here's information on the house. If you have questions about the house, let me know. I mean, they might as well you have a chimp there instead, right, handing out stuff. All right. All right. I, I've talked too much. Once I bring up chimps. It's time to, time to, <laughs> it's time to end. It's time to end. When, All right. when will you be doing the buyer consultation? That's Wednesday, I think. This uh, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday.